So, so my name's Paul McGilvery. My wife and I, 20 years ago, started a company called Remote. We build software for purpose-driven teams. We help them to multiply and amplify their positive impact in the world. You guys are a pretty unique audience to me because I would usually immediately start telling people why they should put purpose at the core of their being. <laughs> so we'll skip that bit. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out. But, um, so what I want to talk to you about is something that I'm really passionate about, which is how we can take what we do and do way more of the good bits of that. So for me, the journey started, and I believe for all of us it starts with purpose. And it's an outward motion from deep inside us, and it starts right back at the start of our lives. And that's the question of why we do what we do. What gets us out of bed in the morning? What excites us? What makes us come alive? Many of us have already asked and answered these questions. It's a question that I constantly ask. Not, oh, why do I get out of bed in the morning? But, <laughs> but, <laughs> but what makes me come alive? And in the work that we've done, with many, many businesses from tiny startups to global corporations, we find that when we ask the why underneath the why underneath the why, we find every time something uniquely personal and something uniquely human about that answer. And when we can find that core reason we do what we do, then the hows and the whats can be multiple and massive and life-changing, not just for us, but for the people around us and for the people who we affect around the world. So those that know me know I'm a bit of a superhero fan. <laughs> so please humour me. I found that, personally, my why, the thing that gets me up in the morning, is to be a superpower enabler. I truly believe that each of us has a unique skill or set of skills that come naturally to us, that come so naturally to us, in fact, that we assume that everyone else finds those things easy. And if we can hone in on those skills and put them in the service of the thing that drives us, then that's the first step in this process of multiplication and amplification of the goodness that we do. So take my mate Superman. We all know him, why? He's a great guy, right? He's got many, many superpowers. Can anyone share with me any of Superman's powers? Fly, See, there's loads of them, right? <laughs> so what, what do we get? Flight, strength, X-ray vision. Any more? Yeah, yeah, until you get Batman versus Superman. Bit awkward, but yes. <laughs> now, what's interesting is that no one said journalism. That's odd, right? That's odd. And yet, he does that some of the time. Now, we might notice that actually, when we look closely, Clark Kent spends as much time as possible trying not to write articles for the Daily Planet. Poor old Lois Lane, until she found out, she was just constantly like, Clark, where are you gone again? Where have you gone? What's going on? Because Superman, Clark Kent, knows that journalism isn't his superpower. And the world doesn't need any more articles written by Clark Kent. <laughs> the world needs saving from Lex Luthor and all the other things. So when you think of Superman, you think of this. You don't think of Clark Kent. 
And that's the way I like to approach each of our own individual superpowers. Yes, we have several, but what we find is that often they sit next to each other, just as Ray was talking about earlier on. And they come from and are driven by our core reason for being. And so when we spend as much time as possible, just as Clark Kent spends as much time as possible not writing, if we spend as much time as possible in our superpowers, then the work we do is hugely more effective. Now, there's quite a few accountants in the room, so let me see if I can, I can stumble through an accountancy example. <laughs> <laughs> when we first started the business, um, we were straight out of college. Uh, I genuinely had no idea what I was doing. And at the end of the first year, hooray, we got through the first year of business, and I had a box of receipts, and I'd done nothing with them. I had no accounting package. I, I hadn't honestly given it a thought. Um, and so I spent weeks with the receipts, trying to read this faded writing and trying to put it into Sage, which I swear I will never touch again. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people feel the same way. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. <clears throat> because Sage was written for accountants. And so many accountants do love Sage because it was written for them. And the way, that way of looking at the numbers is their superpower. <laughs> now, my new accountant gave me this app called Receipt Bank. Yeah. <gasps> wow! <laughs> <laughs> With my first year of business. So now, instead of remembering to take all the faded receipts out of my pocket wallet and put them in a box, I just take a photograph of the receipt and throw it away. And every time I throw it away, I feel an excellent slice of freedom in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll come on to why that's really important later on. But the important thing is that bookkeeping isn't my superpower. It really isn't. And the more time I spend keeping books, the less time I spend helping businesses to make a real difference in the world. Whereas my accountant is making a massive difference in other people's lives and other businesses' lives by keeping their books and giving strategic projections and giving advice and all the things that Shane talked about earlier on. So, we found our why, we found our purpose. And we're spending as much time as possible in that purpose. The problem is, when we're running a business or an organisation, there are a million other things to do. Yeah, it's bookkeeping, there's administration, maybe there's HR, maybe there's just chasing sales, chasing invoices, all the stuff that isn't our superpower. Superman, he's not alone a lot of the time. OK, as we said, his relationship with Batman is awkward, right? But... <laughs> Each of the Justice League have their own superpowers. Batman is incredibly rich. Wonder Woman and her rope of truth there, she can just lasso it around anyone and they'll speak the truth, which is sometimes awkward for Aquaman, who's just, well, he's just full of testosterone, I guess. But <laughs> Between them, they're a force to be reckoned with. They're a force that can achieve anything. They can save the world from almighty gods that have come from another dimension. And they can do things that individually, however super they are, they probably couldn't achieve by, the, by themselves. And so, to build a team around us, a team where each person is in their own superpower, makes you a force to be reckoned with. there's another multiplier. And it keeps on going. Because when that team is working alongside you, the important thing is to bring a team on not specifically based on the skills that they have, but on the reason they utilize those skills. And so just as our why is at the core of our being, we must find people who not necessarily have the same why 
but share the same values and a similar vision for the world we want to live in. And with the differing whys and the shared values and shared vision together, you can create a mission. And that mission can be big. It can be hairy and audacious because you know you've got the team behind you to achieve that mission. And when I've seen this happen in my own company, the difference is astonishing, breathtaking, exhilarating, and inspiring. I'll give you a few examples just from my own experience in my own company. When we realized that this purpose and this, these values were so important, whereas previously, as software developers, I'd found the best C-sharp programmer, or the best person at JavaScript, and brought them in. But they didn't share the same values. They, they didn't see the world how we saw the world as it should be. But when we brought those people in who did share those goals, then actually the energy in the company changed. We got loads more done. The atmosphere was, people, was, people were skipping into work, sounds a little bit camp, but we were, <laughs> we were happy to be there. We were happy to be there. And our clients felt that. And the feedback we got from the clients was, was, was fantastic. But they had different purposes, these people. One, one of my colleagues, he, he was a real, he is a real family man. He really wanted to progress in his career. He wanted to be the best software developer there was. Um, he, he saw that as a way of really, truly providing for his family in a way that maybe previously he hadn't been provided for. That's a real strong why. Quite different to my own why, but in complete harmony because I wanted the best software developer I could possibly get. At the same time, another developer came in who, when we got really down into it, he didn't want people to suffer. He'd had a hard time in his childhood. And he, he just didn't want that for anyone else. And his way of helping people to alleviate their suffering was by mentoring other developers to be the best developers they could be. He's a great teacher. And so you can see how those two very different purposes work together in my team to perform an amazing resonance, and we became greater than the sum of our parts. And so it has gone on with each of the people that we've brought into our team. Our most recent um, team member sees a, a vision where all the world's biggest problems can be solved with software. And we're working on a project now that we really believe will take the world astonishingly close to that solution. And to have that kind of huge goal, it feels possible now because we're achieving things as we go along, because we're all in unison. We're all riding that same train together. And it's, it's, a, it's a magnificent feeling, that feeling that actually, yes, we can move mountains. We can do this, and we should aim for this, because if not me, then, then who? So I want to talk to you about the unlearned multiplier, and I want to talk to you about the next big trend in technology. The buzzword now is cloud computing, artificial intelligence, robotics. We've heard it. It's, it's sweeping the world. It's been around for decades, but now we're feeling the full force of that. If I can give you a quick uh, apologies to the technologists in the room for me teaching my granny to suck eggs, but I'll just give you a quick history lesson. Uh, back in the early 60s, Gordon Moore, one of the founders of Intel, noticed that every year, the number of transistors on a computer processor doubled for the same size of transistor. And yet, at the same time, the cost of producing those transistors halved. And so he noticed that computing power was doubling at the same speed every year. And he was quite astonished by that. And he thought, this, this will probably go on for 10 years or so. So that was back in the early 60s. And it didn't stop. It just slowed down in 2016, where the number of transistors doubling slowed to 18 months. But that's still happening. And that's why I laugh at my, my receipt bank here. And I, it seems crazy that I'm using something, a supercomputer of this power, to capture my receipts when it's many times more powerful than the entire computer operation of NASA when they took people to the moon. 
And that's the wonder of processing. And it, can, it continues to grow. And it continues to become more powerful. And so, with cloud computing, we don't even have to buy these computers any, anymore. We can rent them. We can rent a supercomputer for the day. And so our next challenge in our journey to multiplying and amplifying our impact is to get as much of what we do and move it on to an online platform so that software can do a lot of the work for us. I'll give you a few examples of, um, of how effective this can be. I don't know if any of you have heard of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a tiny outfit um, out in Singapore. Um, I wonder, Paul, if you could give us an idea of how many people you would need to employ, employ around the world if you didn't have the web platform and apps, to how many phone calls you'd have to take, taking in orders and giving impacts. I, I don't know how close. We couldn't possibly imagine. And we're over 170 million impacts thanks to the amazing power of technology, and of course, Paul and Masami, of course. <laughs> so I mentioned Moore's Law. There's also something called the Gartner Hype Curve. I love the name of that, it sounds really cool. And that is that anything that jumps onto the, uh, the exponential curve of growth initially gets a real amount of hype. So people get really excited by it. So this, the hype for this technology goes right up, and then all of a sudden, people go, well, oh, actually, it's nowhere near as good as I thought it was going to be, and it dips. <laughs> and then it continues to grow and grow and grow. So we saw this back in the 80s. Virtual reality. Does anyone remember the first virtual reality consoles? <laughs> I took my brother to the Trocadero. And uh, I was like, David, this is amazing. Wait till you see this. And there were these wireframe dinosaurs on a chess, chess board. And it was, it was kind of amazing, but kind of rubbish. <laughs> 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 um, and yet, it continued, continued to this day. We're actually talking about whole new virtual worlds and whole new possibilities. And the resolution is, is still increasing. We're getting to a point where, in a few years' time, uh, when we put on virtual goggles, our eyes won't be able to tell the difference between a, what we're seeing on the screen and in reality. And computer graphics are improving too, so uh, a computer-generated person like we saw in the last Star Wars, Peter Cushing, was dead, and yet he had a starring role, right? All, anything that jumps onto this exponential curve experiences the height, the drop, and then the growth. And so now we're seeing cloud computing, and we're seeing internet platforms, and we're seeing the hype of blockchain. Everyone went, yeah, Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. We'll see, we'll see it grow. And we'll see the decentralization of uh, currency as a result of, of cryptocurrency. And the, 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 the way that, that the planet is ordered, will, it will change, because trust will be once more delivered by technology, just as when um, capitalism was first invented, it was a new way of creating trust. I don't have to just do deals with my friends and family anymore. I can say, I'll give you 10 pounds for this. And I know that that has value. And so I don't have to actually trust you that any kind of uh, bartering will happen. So technology is just beginning to really rise and make a difference in the world. And it's true, automation and robotics will take our jobs. And that's a great thing. Why is that a great thing? Because 65% of the children going into the education system today will have careers using technology that doesn't exist yet. They'll have careers that don't exist yet. There are jobs that we haven't invented that my granddaughter or grandson will do. The automation will take the jobs that we weren't born to do. Anything that's simple, logical, repeatable, automatable, that's not what we're born to do. Let's let the robots do that, right? Let's let artificial intelligence do that. Because what does that leave when we take away all the 
all the versions of bookkeeping in our day-to-day -day lives, all the things that keep us bogged down in admin when we're running our businesses, all the things that stop us from living the work we were born to do, what we're left is not with administration and bookkeeping and management and HR and all that kind of thing. What we're left with is creativity, compassion, love, joy, life. Those things can't be automated. Those things can't be replicated by artificial intelligence. And those are the things that we should be spending our days doing. That's how we make our impact. That's how we change the world. And so I would talk about the triple bottom line. But actually, a conversation with a friend, Will Richardson, earlier on in the week told me, of course, we have a, a fourth in the, in the bottom line. So we now have a quadruple bottom line. Used to be profit. I say, let's start with purpose. Let's bring our people on board, in align with that purpose. And let's set our goals on changing the planet. Because we can do this. We have the power of technology. We have the power of cloud computing and artificial intelligence, not to replace us, but to enable us. And so we step from the industrial age to the age of knowledge to the age of meaning. And we live here in our purpose. And we live with creativity and innovation and passion and heart and love and life as we were born to do. And I believe we can make the world a better place. Awesome. Thank you.